Hey there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's paper crafting video, I am playing with the Spellbinder Club Kits for April 2024. I had so much fun with these, so inspired by all the fun in these kits. So let's take a look at the January Club Kits. Large Die of the Month Pins and Needles Jar, the Happy Stitching Stamp and Coordinating Die Set. You don't have to get the die set, you can just get the stamp set. There is the Glimmer Hot Foil So Amazing Set, and you do get a roll of hot foil with it. The Cross Stitched Heart Wax Seal and Wax Beads come with. Rainbow Floss Background, there are six stencils in this set. It's amazing. The 3D embossing folder called One Stitch at a Time. The standard embossing folder called Faux Stitched Petal. There is also a Better Press Club Kit called Stitch For You. A small die of the month called Stitched Wall Hanging. And, uh, sorry, that was the Stitch Die of the Month. This is the small die, the Faux Stitched Floss. You can also get all of the club kits in one called the Deluxe Caboodle. If you get that kit, you also get a free die set this month pins and needles sentiments. So let's take a close up look at the large die of the month. This is like the main die I am using throughout today's projects. I use it on everything except one card, I think. Yeah, I just love this jar. I think Spellbinders is like really into the jars lately. We have the honey jar. We had the like jar that had the whale in it in previous club kits. So um, I think they know we love the jars. And this one is made to um, be for those who like to cross stitch. So let's take those pieces from the large die and jump in it and make a huge card. I mean, it's giant. Look at all these fun things. Oh my gosh, these scissors. They're amazing. So detailed, so beautiful. We've got buttons, the embroidery floss in the little skeins. You've got needles. You've got um, pins. It's mm, a thimble, the little um, safety pins, little uh, spools. Oh my goodness. So I'm taking the jar here and adding a dusting of tumbled glass distress oxide ink around the edge to just give it that kind of glass-like feel to it. I like little details like that. Then we have the lid of the jar I am putting on and have die cut with brushed silver cardstock and this little piece of pattern paper with the little skinny um, lines. I decided that was the inspiration for the color combination on this card, which ended up being the color combination for all the cards in today's video. So I added the pins um, on, in the top of that, which is meant to be like a little pin cushion. And then I also added the needle, which by the way, you can thread with the die cut piece of thread that comes in this set. And there's the little skeins of embroidery floss. I added them in multiple shades of each of my colors. Now to turn this into a card, I took the one stitch at a time 3D embossing folder and emboss this large panel of paper because my card is actually gonna be A9 sized. We'll get to that size in a minute, but I wanna talk about this embossing folder. It's 3D and so the needles appear to be um, more embossed than the thread. The thread is really light and thin. And so this is almost like a 3D and 2D embossing folder in one. It's so clever and it's, uh, it's just amazing. The detail is amazing. So I thought I was going to have this, you know, yellow border around the edge, spritz it, and this was going to look great for this card. Only, yeah, when I put the jar up against it, I was like, it's not great. I don't love it. So I moved that aside. I'm going to save it and challenge myself to use it on the next card. And I just did a white background. But I did do a little like countertop for my jar to sit on that I thought would be really cool in like a craft room. And this is some paper that a friend gave me. It's supposed to look like alcohol inked. And I thought it was perfect for almost like a marble countertop, but in this really pretty blue color that totally goes with my turquoise color combination I have going on. And then I'm just going to put the other parts around the jar. So the scissors are kind of leaning up against that. The thread's cascading down over the scissors. Let's tuck the little buttons in. Um, they're really cute. All, just all the details and all the extras in this set, I love. Here's the little thimble. It's got all the details you would expect on a thimble. And that's one thing that I love so much about the Spellbinder dies is the detail. They do not leave anything to the imagination. Like, it's so realistic. It's amazing. Okay, so there's my card front. It needs a little, you know, 
extra stuff. We'll get to that. But I wanted to show you, I use the circle from the middle of the button to put on the like hinge of the scissors. So to add to my card, I'm bringing in that clear stamp and die of the month and going to stamp out the word happy. I'm going to do that with embossing because it looks like faux stitching. So of course I need my white embossing powder on top of colored cardstock and it's going to look so awesome. And I don't know why I love these things even more once I die cut it out, but just having the die to cut around the word happy, look how lovely that die cuts out. It's so worth it to me to have the die. I love the die, but if you wanna just get the clear stamp of the month, you can totally do that. Maybe you like to use your electronic cutting system, totally fine. I love that they give you that option to get the die or not get the die, so you know, whatever you like. I die cut out the word happy again from a lightweight piece of chipboard, and I'm going to back my happy with that just to make it a little bit more sturdy and give it a little lift. Not like you would with foam, but you know, just enough. Plus it's so skinny you don't wanna put foam behind there. I already put foam behind the heads of those pins. That was enough for me, yeah. All right, so I stuck all the things down and now I am showing you my card base, the A9 size. So it's an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock scored in the middle, folded in half. You just take a whole piece of cardstock, fold it in half and you've got your card. It's massive and I love it. <laughs> you can fit this jar on other size cards. This jar is like end to end, it's exactly five and a half inches, maybe a hair over, you would not be able to cut it from a five and a half inch piece of paper. You need a little bit bigger. All right, I did some spools of faux thread or embroidery floss, and I'm putting those on the inside. You can see I did a little dusting of ink in the middle. Um, so where the thread had the openings, you could see a lighter version of that color behind. Added some safety pins, and also in the clear stamp of the month, there's this handmade stamp with scissors that would be great for almost any kind of crafting that you do, whether it's cross stitch or stamping or scrapbooking or sewing. So I think that's a really fun one to add to the back of cards. Next, I am stamping out this cross stitched heart and embossing that with white die cut it out with the coordinating die. I'm going to add a little extra something to the top of my card where it just had like this naked spot. I I cannot do simple cards. I have to have all the extras. I got to fill in the gaps. I got to add the extras. It's just how I am. I love that. So I made a little flag with some light yellow cardstock, dusting the edge with some, it's mustard seed is the main yellow color that I'm using. And then I'm going to pop up that heart on top of it to finish off this card. I've got, well, no, one more thing. <laughs> I added a piece of the thread and the needle to the inside of the card at the top. It's so big, you have plenty of room to decorate the inside and still have room to write on. And yes, my cardstock is a little warped. I That one had been sitting out and I really didn't notice that it had those kind of bumps in it till later. Eh, let's move on. Card number two. Okay, I decided I got to do something with this background, right? I I have all this time and effort into it. Like I can save this, I can make it into something. So I added a little kitsch flamingo to the center. That wasn't quite dark enough. So I brought in some worn lipstick and I really wanted there to be a fade between the yellow and the pink, that orange um, blend there. So I did go back and forth. I brought in the yellow again and that gave me the look I wanted. But I decided I wanted to make this a little bit smaller. So after splattering it with water, because I almost cannot do ink blending with Distress Oxide and not splatter it. Like, it's impossible for me. Yeah. So I cut it down to be an A2 size card front panel and I'm bringing in the Glimmer Hot Foil Kit of the Month, which are all these strips that look like stitching. So you can do faux stitching hot foiled. It's really cool. So I'm doing white, which I have to admit in the end, it's kind of hard to tell that it's hot foiling because it's white and you kind of expect like a metallic shine when you do something that's hot foiled. Yes, my Glimmer Hot Foil plates are uh, wrong side up, but it still worked. That's the first time I've done that. Yeah, I just got too excited to see what the stitching was gonna look like. But I put it, you know, onto my preheated Glimmer Hot Foil system, put the plates on, let it heat up and ran it through my die cutting machine. I also got a little um, excess foiling. So I brought in my sanding eraser and was able to remove enough of that that I will not lose sleep over it. 
So I can use that on my card. I did this other pattern. It's more like a double um, cross stitch. And then I also did the sentiment. There are three, no, four hot foiled sentiments in that set. So I've got those die cut out, ready to go. The little sentiment does have a die, that like curved die, so cool. And then I'm just gonna glue those onto the center of my card. I did my scissors with um, some metallic cardstock that's kind of that turquoise color I'm going with. And I think that is so fun to have the scissors be um, different colors too. So for my So Thankful, I'm gonna have part of the banner hang off and trim that off because I just couldn't bring myself to cover up the scissors. No. All right, I'm gonna add a skein of embroidery floss and a thimble. Now I did multi-color out that floss right there. It was too much. Also not a fan of that. So I ended up covering it up and just did a pink one. I did white on the little um, labels or like wrappers on the end of the embroidery floss. And because it was layered up twice, I took my X-Acto knife to really make a cut in that floss so I could tuck the needle through it. It looks so awesome. And then I just glued down the end. And I'm embellishing this with some wooden buttons that I have in my stash. I've had them forever. I checked, they're not available anymore. Um, sorry, but you know, you gotta use what you have, right? Pull out your stash and shop your stash and use those things, right, my friends? All right, I tied some white thread in there and I wasn't sure I liked it. So I cut the thread off of the star and I like that better, but I kind of like the thread in the heart. So I just left it like that. That's how I left it. And I'm pretty happy with how this came out from a background that I didn't love. I made it into a card. All right, this is a little bonus project that I made on the Crafty Fun with Friends episode 53 on my friend Lynn's channel, LV Handcrafted is her channel name, and I made a little box featuring that free die set that you get if you get the Caboodle kit. And I made a little box out of the jar, just like a little piece in the middle that turned these two back-to-back -back jars um, into a little gift box. I also made a tag with the spool, and if you wanna see exactly how I made that, you can catch that episode. I will have a link to it in the description box below so you can watch that. Plus, all the other people on there are fabulous. They're my friends, and they made some really cool things with other club kits. Like Everybody used different club kits in that video, and it was a great time, so check that out. All right, on to card number three. We are gonna do a five by seven card this time with the jar. It's gonna be a shaker. I love it. You know, I love shakers. I could not use this jar and not make a shaker card. So we're starting out with the background from which I will cut the jar from. I am putting some tumbled glass distress oxide ink on this panel. I don't really need ink in the middle because that's where I'm gonna cut the jar from. So I didn't really focus on that and I didn't want the inking to be perfectly perfect. I wanted a little white showing through. So now I'm taking the embossing folder of the month, which is the faux stitched petal and inking that up with some, mm, let's say Mermaid Lagoon. That could be the color I used. I'm sure I showed it to you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the one. I inked up the side that's really detailed where you can feel each of those little bumps. And then I'm going to just press this down with my hands, kind of using it as if it was a stamp. So I'm just kind of creating my own background paper. I'm not actually embossing with this. I wanted it to be nice and smooth, but I thought that pattern was really pretty. And so there it is. It turned out really good. Yeah. When I went to clean this off, I spritzed that folder with water and I was like, I cannot waste that ink. I can't bring myself to do it. I have to make another panel. Let's see how it turns out. You can see I'm putting a little mat under there. That's just to give it a little bit of squish and give when I press down onto it, just to help for more even transfer. And guess what? Gorgeous second piece that I can save and use for another project, which by the way, I have another project in mind that I wanna use with these club kits. So um, when my better press set comes, I hope to use that and make another project and share with you guys. So cross my fingers that I have time to do that because I think it's gonna be really cute. All right, so once I added my little base where my jar's gonna sit, another piece of pattern paper in my stash, I am adding my jar, just taping it down right where I want it to go and cutting the window into that piece. So the, the fallout jar, I'm gonna use for a bonus project at the very end. We'll talk about that when we get there. <laughs> and then I am going to cover this window with a window sheet. I'm using liquid adhesive and tape runner. Sometimes I just 
I have to use both. I'm such a stickler for things really staying put together. I have a piece of brushed silver and a piece of burlap paper. It's like burlap with a piece of paper on the back. I got it at Spellbinders 100 years ago, so I know you weren't even alive then. But one of those things, also not available and totally from my stash that I had to just use. I think it's really cute for this, and you could maybe even use actual burlap if you had like a good piece that wasn't too loose. Try it. Maybe back it with a piece of cardstock and then cut it. All right, I am using some of the paper clips. They're not paper clips at all. They're safety pins. I'm using the closed safety pins from the die set as part of my shaker bits and these wooden buttons. Now, the wooden buttons are not going to move very much because they're about the same thickness as this very already thick foam tape that's um, by Heffy Doodle. And so I just kind of arranged things where I knew I would be okay if they didn't move around. So that's what you're seeing here. I'll remove all the backing off the foam tape. And I'm going to back this with a piece of vellum, which is a little trick I saw um, my friend Lynn from LV Handcrafted do on one of her recent videos. And I was like, yes, I have done this before, but never with the intention of... Um, also, maybe I have, but I don't know. It just struck me as like, I have to do this, where you put the background paper behind it so that the background paper is a little more muted behind your shaker. And it also kind of gives it the effect of glass. So I that's why I'm gluing this background paper onto the vellum. And it just like, it's transformative. It's perfect. I love it. All right, so I'm adding that to my five by seven card base. So I have a seven inch by 10 inch piece of paper scored at five inches, folded in half. That's your A7 size card. I love this size. I make a ton of A7 size cards and it is perfect for this jar. I would say it's the ideal size for this jar, but you know, do your thing. What Just have fun, right? Pull it out, play around. This would also be great to make a shape card a jar shaped card, which I haven't done that. And now I totally want to because I said that. Ugh. All right, so there's the spool and the thimble added. I'll add the thread. I wanted this to look like, um, you know, it's kind of coming from that little spool of thread. And I'm going to add the wax seal stamp to this. Um, this does come with wax. I chose to use white, that blue color. I couldn't, I couldn't, it just was too like pastel soft country looking where all my stuff is bright colored so I had to do white that's what I had to do but that cross stitch heart with the little needle and thread is really cute and I can't stop putting my wax seals on this particular tag from the assorted tag die set from Spellbinders it's like the perfect size for a wax seal now my wax seal is kind of large I did do four beads of wax so um not much of my tag shows, but I feel like it still works. I tied the top of that with some silver twine, just so it would kind of look matchy-matchy with my silver ring around my jar um, on the lid, and then stuck it down. And now it's time for a label for my jar. So I'm stamping out high that I am going to emboss with white powder because I almost feel like there's no other way to stamp these, even though there is. But with my projects, I just felt like the white embossing was the way to go. So I did that, die cut it out. There's a bunch of sub sentiments that go with the word happy, that go with the word high. Several of them have dies to cut them out as well. So love that. I measured the width of my jar, just cut a strip that's like three fourths. No, I think it was seven eighths of an inch wide. Stamped thinking of you with each stitch. And then I'll stick that down and it makes a little label across the jar. So cute. And then I made it big enough so the word high would fit on there where just a little bit of it hung off. I thought that was really, I don't know, decorative, designer looking, whatever. I liked it. And then for the needles or the pins that I'm putting at the top, I trimmed them down so they didn't stick out past the end of my card or the top of my card so they would be safe inside my little envelope and make it to their destination unscathed. So there is my card. I should probably do something on the inside of that one. I'll get to it later. Now let's move on to card number four. I love this card because I love stenciling. And this is the Rainbow Floss Set. So there's uh, five dies, five stencils. Three of them are gonna make your like floss and two of them are gonna make your labels. So when you have dies like this, or why can't I say stencil? I don't know. 
When you have stencils like this, it allows you to create detail because you're going to layer up the, the different stencils and it's going to give you that detailed look. So because these are spaced apart, it's really easy to do different colors. So I'm going to do two shades of yellow, two shades of pink, two shades of blue. But as the name is represents, you can do this in a rainbow order because there are five different um, no, six different skeins of embroidery floss when you do both stencils. And so you can do the whole entire rainbow, which is so tempting to me. I love doing all things rainbow, but I really wanted to stick with my color scheme. So I did some lighter and darker Distress Oxide inks. My darker one here is Mustard Seed. My lighter one is lemon Squeeze Lemonade. My two colors of pink are Kitsch Flamingo and Worn Lipstick. My two colors for the blue or turquoise would be Mermaid Lagoon and Tumbled Glass. And then when I'm doing the like the detailed part right here, I did the mustard seed over the top of the um, Squeeze Lemonade. And then I did the Worn Lipstick over the top of the Kitsch Flamingo. I did Mermaid Lagoon over the top of the tumbled glass. So then I just needed to find some darker colors to go over my darker colors, right? And that's really easy to do. I don't even have all of the Distress Oxide colors, <gasps> right? Is that crazy? But I have enough, I can make it work. So this is must, no, honey, glazed honey, honey glaze you know, the honey one I did over the top of mustard seed. I did frosted berry over the top of my worn lipstick. And then I believe I brought in prized ribbon to go over the top of mermaid lagoon. And this is just going to give those skeins of embroidery floss the look of each individual strand of the floss and if you love this look you have to check out the small dye of the month it is not one that i get but it is amazing because you can die cut the skeins and have the details now that they don't coordinate with this stencil we realized but you can get that die cut look of a whole like full size actual size skein of embroidery floss they're really awesome so check that out i'm sad i don't get it it's such a cool die set all right, so then I did my first layer of my labels in black, and the second layer I went over the top with some lunar paste in gold. Look at that. It's so cool. I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to fill in my little open space there with a gold gel pen later, even though it's not the right color. It works. It's going to be okay. I'm going to be fine. Um, and then I did have a little bit of like ink transfer onto the back of my stencil, because my inks, I guess, were really juicy. So just be careful of that. Maybe heat set in between layers and you won't have the trouble I had where I needed to use my sanding eraser, but I got enough of it off. All right, so next I have some clay hearts I'm adding, color coordinated to each of these labels. And I think that is just like, oh, so cute. All right, we need sentiment. So back in with the clear stamp of the month, stamping happy on black, of course. I'm embossing it with white, yeah, <laughs> and that is going to go in the center, but like I said, there are sub-sentiments in this stamp set, so I'm going to use those two, but check that out. Oh my gosh, I really wanted this to pop up off the card, so I'm going to use some black foam. This had adhesive on the back, and I don't remember where I got this, but let me just say, fun foam has changed. Like, this fun foam right here is so thick. Uh, it's so sturdy. Where did this come from? Because that's what I need in my life. Now fun foam is gone like, you know, only for kids and from the dollar store and super thin. I don't know. But this, this fun foam made me happy. It really did. <laughs> it's happy foam. Uh, and I wish that, you know, I could find more like that. But I will say Spellbinders has great foam that's glittery, that die cuts so well. I'm obsessed with that fun foam too. I just like cards with lots of different textures on it, so I think that's why I like the foam. But let's get back to the card. I digress. Then um, I stamped the sentiment on there. You make me so, or, you know, S-E-W, so happy we are friends. Oh, it's it seems like such a simple card when you look at it, but really think about all the things we did. The different colors of ink, the stenciling with paste, adding on the embellishments, the embossing of the sentiment, the popping it up. It's such a good card, and you know what? I love it so much. I'm going to give it away to one of you 
my virtual friends that do make me so happy. I'm giving that away in this from this video. So leave a comment. You'll be entered to win. I'll tell you more at the end because we got to talk about this. This bonus project, this is that die cut from the center of my shaker card. So it's going to have that um, embossing folder print on the front. And I wanted to tell you that you can die cut out this jar and flip it over and glue to back to back and they, it is a symmetrical image. So I'm going to make just like a, a panel. Uh, a, it's not a card. I'll, you'll see what it's for in a second. But I wanted the back to appear finished. I brought out some more uh, metallic paper and die cut a rim for the jar from it. I want this to be really subtle because it's so busy with that pretty background and it's going to have a bunch of stuff on it. So I wanted to keep it pretty monochromatic. Now when I talk about lightweight chipboard, you saw me pull that out of some packaging. That is used to be ephemera from Spellbinders. I saved those little pieces to use on projects such as this. I'm going to wrap some actual embroidery floss around these little paper spools. Now you could do this just really lightly and put this on the front of a card. I'm going to use this as like I'm gifting someone embroidery floss, okay? I taped the end to the back and I made, you know, one for each of my colors in my projects today. And then on the back of this, I'm going to stick down a gift card. It is the perfect size for a gift card. I just put some rip and stick tape, some double sided tape there and stuck that down. Now that gift card is not the one I'm actually giving. It's my one I just use for videos. So I'm going to make sure and put like a Joanne Fabrics gift card in here or something. All right, back with the little wooden buttons. I had to show you my little flosser tip that I got from one of my viewers and they actually sent these flossers to me, but they work so good for pulling thread through buttons and paper too. So um, find those in your local drugstore. <laughs> and then I am tying a little bow. And my trick here is to hold the knot and pull the ends. And that helps your twine not like twist up. You've got to just be slow and gentle and patient when tying tiny bows. Okay, just give it lots of love and it'll probably work out. And if not, just put a new one on there, right? Okay, so I'm going to stick these to the top of the little spools of thread with a glue dot. I'm going to um, mix and match. So I'm not putting them the right color on the right color. I thought it was more fun mixed up. And then I'm going to put down some more double-sided tape and stick my little spool onto that. Remember, on the back of that is a piece of tape holding down my thread. So I feel like these are going to be really easy to pop off. But hey, if you didn't pop it off, isn't it just the cutest thing like that? <laughs> Yeah, I think so. So I did add a lid and a little topper on the back side. I wanted to represent my three colors on the back as well. I'm putting this into a gusseted cellophane bag and tying it off with the tag that I made to go with my little box. So this is meant to go in that box just like that. Oh my word. You really wouldn't even have to put it in the cellophane bag if you didn't want to. It fits in there without, but isn't that cute? Oh my word, I could also put some candy in there, like um, a candy bar which would fit in there really good. All right, so let's look at all the projects one more time. I cannot even tell you how fun these are. Maybe it's because I'm into crafting too, you know? And so playing with these crafty things, I, I like to do stitching. I like to die cut felt and stitch it and make little ornaments. I love that. So I like these things as well. I dabble in sewing from time to time. Um, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily a cross stitcher. Don't know if you can hear the fire truck going by. That was really loud. Sorry about that. And then this extra large card is actually going to be a birthday card for someone very special to me. And I'm going to give them this little gift box with a tag and it's going to be great. Okay, let's talk about giveaways because in February, I was giving away this card set, but I forgot to announce it in my March video. So I'm announcing it now. The winner of this card set is at Janet G. I'm going to make sure and comment back to you and let you know you won this so we can be in touch. And then I also wanted to give away this card from my March video and this other card from today's video. I'm also going to throw in a third card from one of my previous Spellbinder videos that's going to be a surprise. Somebody's going to win all three of these cards. Just comment below. I like to randomly select somebody from the comments and mail out these cards. So I will announce that on next month's 
video where I show you all the club kits I get and some cool things to make with it. I thank you so much for stopping by. I ha And if you're still listening, thank you. I have um, the supplies I use in the comments below so you can check that out. And I'll see you all again very soon on a new video. Happy stamping. Bye.